In a previous video, we talked about what happens when we navigate from a page within our application to another page within our application and how we were able to preserve the state of individual page values by using this phone app service dot state then the open and closed uh, square brackets and then the name of the value the key that we wanted to name it we call it anything I called it my value here uh, so we were able to save individual pieces of information in that regard but we noticed that that only works until the application has been removed from memory at which point then it's no longer valid we haven't talked about what happens whenever the user decides to click the back button or the start button and actually leave our application well as far as the Windows Phone 7 operating system is concerned those two actions of clicking the back button or the start button are different even though the to the end user and even to us sometimes they may appear to be the same let me explain. When a user opens your application from the start screen, the application has been launched. It's in a launched state. The user then interacts with the application, then the, then the user clicks the back button on the phone, and then the application has gone into a closed state. At that moment, the application is removed from memory. However, suppose that a user opens up your application from the start screen and is interacting with the application, and then the user clicks the start button on the phone a second time and launches another application like Internet Explorer. Uh, at this moment, your application is considered to be deactivated, not closed, but deactivated. The connotation is that the user didn't explicitly intend to finish their work with your application, but rather they wanted to simply multitask and open up a second application. So to the user and to the programmer, the effect is really the same. The application is no longer visible on screen, and in fact, even when the application has been deactivated, it's been removed from the phone's memory. So what's the difference then between closed and deactivated? It seems to be simply the intent. Closing the application denotes that the user has finished interacting with it. Deactivating the application denotes that the user is just switching temporarily to another application. So while the practical implication is the same no matter what, that the application has been removed from memory, the distinction allows you as the developer to decide how to handle this subtle difference in case, in fact, you want to enforce a different behavior whenever the user clicks those two buttons. At any rate, carrying on with this example, suppose that just a few minutes later the user clicks the start button again and then relaunches your application. The application at that point is said to be activated or in an activated state. When an application is removed from the phone's memory, all unsaved data is removed from the phone's memory as well. So fortunately, there are some events that you as the developer can handle that deal with this exact situation, either when the user clicks the back button or the start button, or returns to your application after either of those events. There are events that you can write code to deal with these situations and save off data and then restore it once the application has been relaunched or reactivated uh, so that it doesn't seem like anything's really changed to the end user. This process of saving and then restoring the state of an application that's been removed and then reopened on the phone is called tombstoning. So in this video, we're going to look at how to add event handlers to save and retrieve the data and the settings that describe the current state of the application. I think this is all going to become clearer once we get into the example. But you might be wondering, well, where do you actually get to save the state to? Well, I'm going to demonstrate in just a moment a special feature of isolated storage like we learned about earlier that allows us to just save fragments of information, not entire files like we did previously. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But the easiest way to illustrate this whole concept is in just a couple of lines of code, creating a text box on an application, uh, and then allow the user to type into it. As he's typing, we're going to save that temporarily using the state bag that we used earlier. Uh, but then when they choose to either select the back button or the start button, we're going to save that into a more permanent place in isolated storage. So what we're going to do is start off with a new application. As you can see here, I've got a new application in Visual Studio called Task Switching. And the first thing I'm going to do is just drag and drop a text box control into place on the designer surface. And I'll rename this for easy reference and I'm going to remove the text property so we just have now a blank 
text box. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the events and I'm going to create a new text changed event handler. And so what I want to do here is similar to what we've done in the past. In fact, right above it, I want to create or I want to get a handle on our phone application service. So phone application service. I'm going to hit control period to use uh, to add that using statement. Call this phone app service equals phone application service dot current. All right, so this will give me a handle on the phone application service that gives me that state bag that I can use to save values in. So I'm going to use it like this phone app service, uh, whoops, dot state. We're just going to call this my value equals my text box dot text. Okay, great. So first things first, we're saving off anything that the user types into the phone. We're going to save it into a temporary storage area uh, in case they do something else like uh, move to another page of our application or they exit. Uh, then the corollary to this is on the loaded event. for the phone application page, I'm going to pull the value out if one exists. Okay, so up to this point, this will handle the situation we had previously, where if somebody navigates to another page inside of our same application and then comes back to this page, the value will be retained. What it doesn't solve is the situation where somebody clicks the start button or the back button and then tries to come back to our application. This data won't be available in that situation. So how do we remedy that? Well, what we're going to do is go to our uh, app.xaml and I'm going to open up the app.xaml.cs file. And here you'll notice that there are uh, a number of events that have already been defined with no code. There is an application launching, application activated, application deactivated, application closing. And the code comments will give us some idea when each of these are fired. For example, launching. Code to execute when the application is launching from start or from the start menu. Code to execute when the application is activated brought to the foreground. Okay, So again, the difference between those two actions. When it's initially launched or when it's brought back to the foreground after it's been uh, sent to the background. Deactivated handles the situation where the application has been sent to the background by hitting the start button. Or the application is completely closed whenever we uh, somebody hits the back button. Okay. So what we're going to do is start off by writing some helper methods here. And I'm just going to put it at the very bottom right before this uh, roll-up area, phone application initialization. I'm going to create two whoops, helper methods one called save state and then the other one called load state and their job is simple we're gonna take whatever was in that state bag that we've already saved to here we've already done some of the work so let's just whenever we encounter this we're gonna use that value that's already in the state bag and then save it into the isolated storage area okay so let's go ahead and we're gonna write a little code here Okay, so I finished with the save state helper method. Here we're just creating another instance or a reference to the current phone application service so that we can retrieve the state value in our state bag. Here I'm creating a new uh, a reference to the isolated storage settings, which gives us access to the application settings that are saved in isolated storage. Okay, so this is a new concept. Basically, it's just a, a way to save name value pairs into a repository that only our application can access. So we could save any kind of, of values that we wanted to to initialize our application. In this case, we're just going to save the values that the user already typed from their previous session. So uh, I'm going to retrieve the values from our temporary state 
and save it into a more long-term state by calling the settings and then passing in something called my value. Now I just happen to name these exactly the same. I can name this one different than this one. It doesn't have to be the same. I just did that as my own convention so I could remember uh, the the key value that I'm using for both of them. Okay. All right, so now that I've saved the values, the corollary to that is retrieving those values. So some of this code is going to be the same. I'm going to need these first two lines of code. And I'm just going to kind of do the exact opposite. OK, so once again, we're working with the phone app service and our isolated store settings, just like we did previously. But this time, what we're going to do is try to get my value out of our isolated storage settings. If we're successful, then we'll execute this block of code where we set that value into our phone app services temporary state bag. So state my value. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I reusing this? Because we've already written the, the code on this page to handle that situation whenever the page loads to retrieve whatever's in that phone app service and place it in the text box. So I'm just leveraging what already exists in my code to handle that. I'm just handling it now from a shorter term memory to a longer term memory and uh, just utilizing what I've already built to handle it. So now that I've built save state and load state, I need to call each of these appropriately inside of these, uh, these, these events that have been defined earlier. So in this case, when launching or activated, I'm going to call load state. And I'll call load state. And then here, I'm going to call save state. Whoops. And save state. Now one last thing I want to do just because I'm a little bit paranoid is that I am going to uh, make sure that we don't get an exception and the way that I'm going to do that is by making sure that there's actually a key value available called my value first before I actually try to retrieve it. I don't think the code would blow up if I didn't have this but Again, I'm a little bit uh, superstitious, and I just want to do sufficient number of checks before I get too far with this. So let's put this inside like that. OK. So if I've, if I've written everything correctly, this should work. We'll run it once to demonstrate exactly how this works. And then I'll run it a second time and set some breakpoints so we can see exactly where things are firing. Okay, so to begin, what I'm going to do is type in something, and then I'm going to hit the Start button, and then I'm going to come back into my application, and the word Bob is still there, so that's great. Now let me use the Back button, and then come back into the application and it's still there. Okay, great. So we solved the dilemma of saving our state while the application has been tombstoned by the phone. So let's do this. We're going to run it one more time, but this time what I want to do is kind of to drive home when each of these events fire. I'm going to set a breakpoint on each call. Whoops, let's put one there. So now, every time this fires on the phone, we're going to be able to see it uh, occur here in our code. Now, truth be told, we're not going to get this to fire on every one of them because, unfortunately, whenever we move away from the application running in the emulator, it's going to lose a connection with the emulator again. I think there is a technique that I can use to uh, connect back up, so we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. So let's start over again. I'm going to run the application again. Okay, and as you can see, as soon as I start up, launching fires, application launching. So let's go ahead and run it. And now when I call, when I hit the start button on the phone, 
it's going to call deactivated. So the application is still activated in the phone's memory. But it has been, for all practical purposes, removed from memory. It's just, again, that nuance. Now let me, one more time, execute the application. Notice that we are not hooked up to our uh, Visual Studio, so I'm going to run it a second time. And now I'm going to hit the back button. And notice that we're hitting now application closing whenever I hit the back button. So now it's been permanently removed from memory. But even if I were to start it back up, we're still saving the value. Okay. So that's really the only thing that I wanted to demonstrate in this video is to talk about what happens when the user switches to another application temporarily or if they use the back button to indicate that they want to close out of your application. Either way, the values that are on your form are going to be removed and we have to, as developers, take that into account and provide a nice elegant experience for the user in case they didn't intend to do that. Now they've lost all their work. Right? So at any rate, hopefully you've learned a little bit about task switching, tombstoning. We've looked at this app.xaml.cs and the four events that fire whenever an application is launched or activated, deactivated or closed. And then we also looked at how to work with isolated storage settings, which are a uh, a way of storing key value pairs in isolated storage for this application without having to save our own uh, proprietary file format like a settings.txt where we put all those values in. This is much more convenient. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.